بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد in this global system where every effort is being made to extort humanity we should make sure we are not the guinea pigs we are not the lab rats in this big scam whether you are on facebook whatsapp instagram and it seems to be free it is not free you are paying for that service with your life your most valuable assets and your time so basically there is a sale of your life it's the modern day slavery so worse than that is when a person is going to go to the electric chair to the slaughterhouse and he pays for it and he takes pride about it so we need a mindset change we need to train we need to be more geared up we need to be more organized like simple things forget privacy a simple thing like going into the ceiling of your house all the time you have a torch you need a charger battery cable etc to make sure you can see repair something in the ceiling why didn't you put a light in the first place have a switch like you have the rest of your home so it's a mindset when we make in wudu we open the tap and waste so much water but we can do it with a fraction a fraction a normal water bottle a spray bottle 250 ml it's possible to make full wudu so as a believer we are thirsty we are wise people go into the shower they open the hot water tap and let the cold water run till the hot water comes so we lose 10 to 15 liters possibly of water before the actual hot water comes out that's a complete waste so it needs a change of mindset to identify if you are the slaughterer or the slaughtered are you the hunter or the hunted so if you go to psychologists and professors they'll tell you the game of extortion go to the marketers and they'll tell you how you are being played go to the sales people go to the politicians so generally people are gullible we are all gullible from from time in memorial where humanity the world believed that the earth was flat and there were edges there to the modern day 21st century where people are gullible enough to be convinced of the untruths and they are told this is their own benefit so individuals groups the new world order these nefarious minded people deliberately abuse humanity but in this deliberate abuse we allow ourselves to be abused so when somebody says we need to invade a country because that in inverted commas evil country has weapons of mass destruction then how many people believe it likewise smoking cigarette doesn't cause lung cancer or big billboards and signs saying it's harmful and doesn't change people are still smokers the smoker will read it on the pack but he'll still smoke with the pack glaring in front of him and somebody says no i'll take hookah it's a lighter form or vape do your research or somebody says put more of your resources and wealth in the hands of the job creators that will grow the economy or somebody says take our patented drug which will modify this number and you are likely to get a bad disease if you don't take our drug and it's a easier solution right you don't need to exercise you don't need to give up fast take away food that takes your life away and makes you faster to death la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah so how much of this propaganda machines 
which are around us are we believing so the big money the big corporations the multinationals are taking advantage of our human gullibility simply voters vote for potentially somebody who will achieve exactly opposite of what they voted for so we're living in a mis mistaken belief system a, a professor of harvard law found that 60 percent of statements on fox news is either entirely completely false or mostly false and a, a 2011 study showed that fox news viewers believed more of the falsehoods than any other group so if fox news is currently the most watched cable news channel in the u.s and has been for many years we can understand how naive humanity is people trust scientists they trust doctors but these same people are working directly and indirectly for corporations who want to maximize and profit so the results has anybody verified it checked it this unvarnished results of unbiased scientific research so how much twisting of the message how much research is there to benefit the benefactors so independent scientific studies and publications are corrupted to your research a Stanford professor concluded that medical practitioners are still treating patients as if all research is uncorrupted and this is the bible scenario believe everything this is what it's going to do what about the arms what about the side effects what about the consequences what about the long-term consequences what about alternate medicines alternate solutions and we, we we are prey to that somebody had to tell you you go hunting and the hunter tells you that uh, we go in hunting and we cross a pack of lions and he tells you that uh, you know lions enjoy being patted under the belly and you believe him because you trust him it's your body he's your friend it's the gospel how many descendants do you think so you will have after that if you believe him so if if you think that you're not going to believe this scenario then you believed a lot more that's what there's a saying if you want peace prepare for war if you want peace prepare for war so we we have to calibrate our trust we believe more in doctors than our neighbors we believe more in friends than strangers we make sure what we are told doesn't clash with our previous beliefs our pre preconceived ideas and we evaluate arguments to convince ourselves when Ambiya Ali Musalat Wasalam came, people were blind to the truth. And what was the cause? Why did they not critically analyze their current life, evaluate, and comparatively apply it to what the Nabi was saying? So part of the destruction was going by the norm, not evolving, not changing, not taking lesson. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Just told to them, whatever Allah has revealed, this is the command of Allah, this is what you need to do. You need to not worship idols, you need to worship Allah. I am the messenger of Allah. What they said, قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُوا مَا أَلْفَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا We found our forefathers doing a certain thing. So we will go by that. What? Even though their forefathers were not intelligent, they were not rightly guided, there was no tangible reason besides you found, found them doing it. We look at all cultures, all backgrounds generally. And that's why it's encouraged all the time to sit in the company of the ulama haq 
because deen can become adulterated and contaminated and from the people you perceive to be seeking through deen they may be a breach وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا إِلَى مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ وَإِلَى الرَّسُولِ قَالُوا حَزْبُنَا مَا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا So when it is told to them that uh, this is revelation, this is, this is what you, you are told to do, then they conveniently say, this is sufficient. We will follow what we found our forefathers to do. So they're not ready to move from the opinion. They're not ready to change. They're not ready to take lesson. They're not ready to evolve. But they get caught on this whole notion and they accept it. And they clearly reject everything else so ma wajadna alayhi aba'ana that's what we found so as people of iman a believer is not caught so privacy is very important like how a person in external means has taken safety precautions where a person doesn't want to get harmed robbed and when he, he leaves his home, he takes precautions. Likewise, with regards to our safety and security, our privacy is important. Keeping secrets, information, not releasing information is very important about yourself. In Surah Tahrim, Allah SWT speaks about وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا When uh, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam disclose a matter in confidence secretly he communicated a piece of information to his wives so that piece of information was with regards to him having honey فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَتْ بِهِ when he divulged this information informed her that uh, this fragrance that you are smelling is honey وَأَذْهَرُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ أَرَّفَ بَعْضَهُ وَإِنَ اللَّهُ مَيْدْ هِمْ نَوْ تُوْ إِتْ And when the Nabi of Allah informed her, Aisha, when he informed her Zawaj al-Mutahharat, فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَهَا بِهِ قَالَتْ مَنْ أَنْبَأَكَ هَذَا Who informed you about this? So when Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, the narration of Bukhari, where Aisha رضي الله عنها narration, that uh, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam would stay in the house of Zainab bint Jahash and drink honey in the house. So Aisha and Hafsa decided that when Nabi alayhi salam entered on them, they would say that they smell maghafir. So when that was stole, he said, La bal sharibtu aslan inda Zainab. I consumed honey by Zainab, but walan a'uda lahu. I will never drink it again. So Maghafir is a type of a sap, a type of a citrus from uh, other ulama Urfut is a tree of the shrub variety which secretes Maghfur. So, so it was considered as a foul smelling item and Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam didn't want that to emanate from his Mubarak body. So he took an oath that he will not consume it again. So these ayat were revealed. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ لِمَا تُحَرِّمُ مَا أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ لَكَ Why have you forbidden, why are you preventing yourself from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed تَبْدَغِي مَرْضَاتَ أَزْوَاجِكَ Seeking the pleasure of your wives. So this was a rebuke because the secret information, the information that was relayed should have kept like that, but that was abused. So ulama mufassirin have mentioned, uh, Shaykh Jamaluddin Qasimi has mentioned that this is an ishara, an indication that the exposure of the secret, that was a secret and that secret was divulged. وَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ الذَّنْبِ تَجِبُ التَّوْبَ مِنْهُ It was a type of breach and disobedience with needed tawbah and istighfar and repentance. 
So this mindset of keeping things secret is a mizaj and it's the mindset of deen. So some people say, but it doesn't matter to me. It's, it's not important. I've got nothing to hide. So only criminals should protect themselves. No, everybody should protect themselves from everything, from the evil eye. You posted your picture, you draw in nazar. Sickness, disease, accidents, you are prone. You are prone, you're causing yourself harm. You're showing your best self, your best possessions, your best of everything, and that mostly fabrica fabricated and photoshopped with the right angle, the right lighting, the right everything. Take that picture when you wake up in the morning. So, after being so selective, we're trying to show the best and we're drawing the worst. So, you need to protect yourself. It's part of your human rights. So, so privacy is, is a fundamental human right. Part of the 1948 United Nations Universal Declaration. If we just had to go into that aspect. So, we become so involved in dunya, so engaged in our activities. We can't see what's happening around us. We give an importance to everything that is trivial and we've abandoned that which is important in priority. What's a high alert? What should I prioritize in my life? So it is, it is, uh, it is beautifully said, it is not about how busy you are, but what are you busy with? Everybody is busy, but what are you busy with that's important? Have you prioritized your life? So people surveys show that people are generally negligent. You see, there was a football fan who had a, a bad seat at a stadium and he had a bad view. So he looked through his binoculars and he spotted an empty seat. So close to the goalpost, he made his way there. When he got there, he asked the man next to the seat, was this taken? Because somebody might be there. The man said, this is my wife's seat. She passed away and she was a big football fan, especially of this team here. So the person now first said that somebody else's seat and secondly, the man's wife died. So he needed to console him. So he said, I'm terribly sorry to hear of your sad loss, sir. May I ask why you didn't give the ticket to a friend or a relative? You thought so maybe they booked the ticket in advance and the wife passed away. So why didn't you give the ticket to somebody else? So he replied, they all at the funeral. They all at the funeral. Sometimes we're so blind to the most important things in our life. By the time we know it, the angel of death is there and it is too late. Let's take another example. A survey just depicting how negligent and unaware people are. And, and, and we need to reflect, am I oblivious? Am I very reckless? Am I so naive to get caught and mindful of the situation? So two years after Edward Snowden disclosed his cache of secret material uh, retrieved from the NSA, a survey was done, done in Times Square in New York City. And uh, the survey was done on people randomly to identify the importance of privacy and surveillance. So part of that questioning was, question number one was, who is Edward Snowden? What did he do? So most 99.9% .9 of people, no one even seemed to know him. If people vaguely seem to recall his name, they couldn't say exactly what he had done or why. Means that, that the conclusion of this experiment, that despite years of media coverage, despite the gravity of what was done, and despite the importance of what had happened, no one in America really seemed to care about domestic spying by the government. So the reporters that did this data went to Snowden, who was in Moscow, asked him what he hoped to accomplish. And he said he wanted to show the world what the NSA was doing. They were collecting data on almost everyone. But when he showed the interviews of Times Square, he had nothing to say. He just said, well, you can't have everyone well informed. You cannot have 
everyone well informed so we need to be well informed the amal for today is the importance of using the miswak lan usalli rak'atain bi siwakin i love and prefer to read two rak'ats with the miswak احب الي من ان اصلي 70 ركعه it is more beloved to me than reading 70 rakats of salah without a miswak may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the fiqh of making amal wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin